he might be. In oh, we're live. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting conversation. Keep going. Um, and then if I have, if I have sugar, okay, so I get headaches, and when I use the washroom to urinate, yeah, it takes me honestly on average between twenty five seconds, and sometimes close to a minute to get going. No, to like I'll just to piss. Yeah, but you just have a big bladder. Doesn't mean you're diabetic. Yeah, Anything you might have, you might be having. You know what they say about cases. guys with big bladders? Oh no, yeah. prostate issues, eh? You might have too young for that. No, no, you can have an inflamed prostate. Still. Oh yeah. Yeah. But all, all I know is that I, I like I piss often. I think you need to massage your prostate more often. I piss often. <laughs> <laughs> can help you. Well, I piss. I often have someone for you. A lot. Like the other, Not I me. went. We uh, on the way to Montreal. Yeah. I had to stop twice in two hours. To You're that annoying uh, passenger. <laughs> yeah. How long is that going be on for? Or? How long is that be going on for? Uh, a while, man. Have you like been I've been, weight? I've been having, I've been having these thoughts for the last three years at least. Have you been losing weight? No, but I haven't been gaining weight. Guys ripped. Um. <laughs> like I work out a lot, not a lot. I work out at least once a day, at least something. I do something once a day. Yeah. And my diet, listen, man. Like it's not perfect, but I do have my poutines once in a while, once a day. Poutine wouldn't day. be an once issue. a day. Poutine <laughs> no, would be no. a non-issue. Um, like I would have, like I'm gonna have poutine or pizza at least, at least once a week. Both of those are non-issues. No, no. I can eat pizza all day. <laughs> well, the grease and the pizza reduces the level of glycemic. So index. what is the issue? Um, so like white bread. Um, if you, like, and it depends how much how much of it you're eating, right? Like. How much pizza and puts in are you eating? Yeah. To me, I can eat pizza and puts in because they have a lot of cheese and gravy, and it's but like pizza is different, but it's potatoes don't spike my blood sugar mm. very much. But I, like white bread, cookies, things like that will just absolutely destroy me. I can't eat those. I can't be friends with people who pronounce diabetes. 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 <laughs> I don't understand those people. Processes. Processes. Never heard that. Processes. What about Caligis? Caligis. We had a friend. You want to be in my picture? Was very French. Sure. You want to hold this up? He's talking about her colleagues at, fr- at work, and uh, she said, "My Caligis at work." <laughs> Who is this person? A uh, friend's sister. <laughs> my Caligis. My Caligis. <laughs> how do you go through life not understanding how why, that word works? <laughs> why are you holding it like this? It's like a gang sign. Yeah, With it's, the our, uh, <laughs> it's gang neutral. <laughs> gang neutral. All right. But yeah, we we can talk about it later. Um, there's all sorts of other gross details that indicate whether you have diabetes or not. <laughs> What's going on the gram? Is it green poo? No, no. It's mostly it has to do with urine. Oh, yeah. My urine is clear as the, as like clear. Clear. Does okay, it smell like the, asparagus? Like. Does your toilet bowl get dirty really quick? Like noticeably quicker. My toilet bowl? Yeah. Yes. Does it get dirty quicker? Do you yes. get a ring around a lot yes. quicker? Yes. Well, yes. then you might want to get checked. Because then you're pissing out sugar, and that sugar is festering in your toilet. What? Yeah. Is that for real? Yeah. You might. You may have diabetes. Is it red? Of course, I'll have to live. No, no. It could be clear. But like your toilet bowl will develop a film quicker because you're pissing out sugar. All or you time. could just have iron in your water. Uh, yeah, but if you live in the city, that would be in that. True. That wouldn't be the case. True. So uh, this is fascinating. It is. Has Diabetes. nothing has nothing to do with the tipping point. Well, maybe. The we never. Point. You never know. There's always all sorts of segues. Is there a tipping point for diabetes? There is. There definitely. Are you the one expanding the uh, the epidemic? <laughs> of diabetes, of diabetes. <laughs> or he caught it from me. Diabetes. <laughs> you know, this book it kind of reminded me of. Uh, so uh, the other day, I noticed you guys have Queen here, and you guys listen to Queen quite often. No, is it Queen? No, you listen to that you was, the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles. No, that right. one. That one melted. No, the Eagles melted. You're thinking about the one he just got. What is it again? The Marianas Avengers. Trench. Oh. Okay, well, I uh, watched the. Um, Queen movie? Yeah, the Queen movie. The, Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody? Bohemian Rhapsody. Pretty good. That's on Netflix now. Right? Great movie. But Is it? You know how he so. gets AIDS because obviously he was gay back in the den and, and, and gay people were a lot more active, I'm assuming. That's why they got AIDS. 
I don't know why, but anyways, I know it was a spread at the time, like in the sixties or seventies, right? Yeah. Um, and this book reminded me of that. Well, yeah, he does yeah. Uh, have a few references of <laughs> certain people who help G- spread that. Gay Tanzuga. <laughs> Gay Tanzuga flight attendant? Yeah, yeah, sex sick. over over 2,500 people. Yeah. Gay Tanzuga. What's the other guy? The other guy. The, um, uh, there's there's the three pimp. names. Yeah, there's a big, there's two big dudes, and they, they're yeah. similar in yeah. their MO. And they it doesn't say they're big. They sound big. 2,500. Eh? Oh, I think he said the first guy was like 6'4", 300-something pounds or something. Yeah. Big deal. Uh, I didn't write it down. I stopped writing notes at one point. Oh, new Sean Williams. Yes, that's him. Boss man who yeah. uh, gave boss. HIV to about a hundred women. <laughs> yeah. New sh- new Sean Williams. Testing. And then he got shot. Yeah. Gay Tanzuga. Testing. Do you have Instagram? What is it? Uh, I think I'm following you. What is it? No, maybe I'm not. Felix, uh, wow. Felix the cat. Felix Kr six one three. Felix Kr. Kr. Device. Put. Or just K. Kr. <laughs> Kilo Romeo. Yep. Yeah. Six one three. Killer Romantic. Nineteen eighty five. Doctor Love. <laughs> Every time I log into a chat when I was. Uh, you know, not too long ago, <laughs> when chats were still a thing, MSN my name was always Doctor Love. Doctor Love. <laughs> Doctor Love, nineteen eighty-six. Who is this uh, Doctor Love? Love who was born in nineteen eighty-six. I was like thirteen years old. Doctor Love. Love. Doctor Love was a um, a marijuana distributor in Where? Lac d'Argile oh, yeah? campsite. He was. He would wear the same. I don't know if it was the same shirt, but he always had the same logo. It was just written Dr. Love and then his phone number. Hmm. Kind of like Mr. Happy in that. You just call him up for, for some, <laughs> for some uh, cigaweed. Yeah. That was a good movie. I want to talk to Samson. <laughs> yeah, when I was in college, this guy he was a genius, a marketing genius. He uh, printed out Weed Man cards, like the lawn care company. Yeah. And he just put his cell phone number on there, and if you wanted weed, you just called him. <laughs> Had business cards, weed man. Pretty cool. But he stole the land, the landscaping company's yeah, but like logo. So what is this? Now, work for weed man. Yeah. So now he's yeah he's breaking the law twice. It's not too he's not too genius. Copywriting and distribution law. He was in college. <laughs> All right, let's he's going do this. somewhere. Let's do this. Let's start with chapter unos. Dos, cuatros. Whoa. I missed one, eh? Tres. Tres. All right. What are we going to do next week? Or am I going to join in from Ireland? Ireland? We can have you phone in. It would be nice if I can be... Uh, Skype in, yeah? Yeah, from... Uh, Maybe we can Skype your face on here. From the Lock Key Castle. Or I might be in Belfast. Hmm. In Northern Ireland, Ireland, or Newcastle, and try surfing. Are they good surfing out there? I've never surfed in my life, Felix. Yeah. Do they drink in Ireland? No. <laughs> I, I would bar <laughs> surf. Is it? I think it's a dry country. <laughs> I, would, I would just. It's like the it's country. like the Utah of uh, Europe. What's your boxer to t-shirt ratio that you're bringing for a I'm trip like that? I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna bring. Uh, at least at least seven to ten boxers. How many days? Yeah. Are How many days? I leave Sunday night. Yeah. I'm gonna wear my athletic boxers on the plane. <sighs> Good call. And I'm gonna l- I'm coming back Sunday afternoon. Okay, so, so you need at least fifteen pairs of boxers. No, you get ten. What the oh hell? yeah, ten, yeah, ten yeah. yeah. Ten. You yeah, would. Yeah. I let's do oh yeah. I do one per day and then I bring an extra. One per three. day, man. That's. And I bring an extra three. Living life on the edge. Well, we're probably gonna do some uh, some laundry. Well, yeah, seven is excessive. I, I heard. Ireland I would probably bring like have, three or four. They do have laundry facilities. Yeah, well, probably. <laughs> <Three or four laughs> but like whenever I travel, I got like way too many boxers, way too many socks and t-shirts. Exactly. I hear they're pretty developed. There. And two pair of jeans. I I always go super light, and there's a washing machine along the way, or there's the hotels a clothing store too. Yeah, because you just. You don't want to pack too much. You know, stuff. Ireland. Ireland is actually there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hype surrounding it right now. I think it's one of the number one 
destination for boxer purchases. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of the <laughs> I think it's one of the number one countries to visit at the moment. Really? Right? Yeah, I think it's up there. I don't know if it's number one, but I think it's up there. Is it uh, cost effective? Like, is it uh, Absolutely expensive? Not. I, I don't think expensive. so. I know. Yeah. I know. Iceland. Iceland is extremely pricey. Yeah. What? But to get there is cheap. But to get there is cheap. Yeah. Okay, that's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there's nothing over there. To get to Ireland is expensive. I mean, but the, the the cost of living there is in euros. But it's probably the same thing as here. I think. Yeah. I don't hmm. know. Whenever anyone tells me something's really expensive, I ask Siri what the average housing price is there, and it's always in the four hundreds. Oh really? It's so definitely. what's the average housing price in Ireland? I mean, if you're gonna buy I it in Dublin, to Ireland, but like, or I'll check Cork. California sometimes, or uh, like different cities in California. So your indicator of cost of living is housing market. Housing price, yeah. Huh. Mm. Interesting. I go. Because everything else, with you, the price of boxers. People, when people say foods are really expensive, whatever, you can always there's ways to offset that. Do you remember when we ditched our our t-shirts in Venice? Because they were dirty, and <laughs> yes. we bought a new shirt, and we just stashed them somewhere, we hoping were. to go back and find them one day. I think Venice will be sunken by then. <laughs> they might still be there. Isn't Venice floating? It's it's not floating. It's on pillars, wooden pillars, but it's sinking. Yeah, but now they're putting everything on these big airbags. Yeah, so they're trying everything. Yeah, yeah. When we were there, there was this big statue of hands holding a building cool. to um, promote venice and and what's happening one it's sinking and two because of all the uh the uh visitors Uh, every year um the locals are being pushed out because of all the airbnbs and stuff like that you can't afford to stay there anymore the average price of a home in ireland is three hundred and thirty six thousand 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 american canadian Hmm. that's affordable it's 229 Euros. If I, if I lived in Euros. Ireland, I think I'd be a, a bartender or a stonemason. Mm. I'd be a male stripper. Sounds like those are two. <laughs> You'd be a male stripper. <laughs> I think there's a lot more males in Ireland for some reason. than. I'd be a leprechaun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this, this mm-hmm. show started. The so tipping point. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to part one of three of the tipping point by Mr. Malcolm Gladwell, the science of little things affecting big changes. How little things can make a big difference. Thank you, Chris. So uh, we got into the first three chapters this week. Yep. And uh, the first two. First two. Well, yeah. we'll stopped yeah. at the before at number three. Yeah. With the introduction, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some eye-opening stuff for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of reoccurring themes from uh, the past books that we. Well, read. I called you yesterday. Yesterday, and uh, as soon as I heard the eighty twenty rule in the book, I called you and I said, "Man, every time we read a book, it sounds similar to another book." But then you said, well, "What did you say?" You said something. I said, smart. "Knowledge is not addition; it's multiplication." Wow! Wow! <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes! <laughs> yeah. Are we going to talk about the introduction, or are we going to start with chapter one? It's up to you guys. I think we should just, I don't know. Let's just get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. Do it. Um, I think, so they begin with uh, with the medical epidemic in Baltimore. The syphilis yeah. epidemic. Right? Yeah. And he talked about, and th- I think that was his opening. Word of mouth. <laughs> yeah, that was his opening story. That was his opening story. And then he separated the three types of, uh, in three categories, um, what could make something tip. Yeah. Right? Um, and then throughout the entire book, I'm assuming he's going to be using that. If you look at page seven, he talks about the flu, uh, the contagiousness of HIV and flu. Yeah. Um, I wrote an idea virus from Purple Cow oh. because that's essentially what he's talking about and how yeah. Hush Puppies became, yeah. you know, a world renowned brand again because it was falling apart. They were thinking about going bankrupt and then all of a sudden, they blew up so an idea virus is what came to mind but and you see a lot of like you see a lot of um, like like the bell bottom jeans yeah right the bell bottom mm-hmm. jeans they took a they, they those just can't die and they keep coming back well they died and then they came back when we were kids they yeah. came back and now they're dead again now it's like the skinny jeans does yeah. anybody wear bell bottoms it, sometimes uh, i do I no i can't even wear boot cut jeans because i feel like they're bell bottom yeah same here man yeah, yeah. And it, it needs to be extra skinny for me now. 
Yeah. It makes you t- look taller too, right? And I think that's the uh, that's the idea. Makes you look. Fair. If you're uncomfortable in the package area, then you know your jeans fit right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're sitting down, you need to I can't wear toss your junk aside. Then you know you got a right fit. <laughs> I can't wear most of the jeans they come out with anymore. No, thighs are just too thick. Yeah, they're thick. too thick. And I got that's a bit of a booty now. That's because so. you're huge. Yeah, huge, huge, Yoked. humongous. <laughs> you have to go to Jack and Jones. They're stretchy. So or uh, Perry Ellis. So oh, yeah. Three principles. Stickiness factor. Yes. The law of the few. Yes. And the power of context. The power of context. So okay. let's start with the 80 20 rule. That's the law of the few. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys have to say about that? So in here, they talk about the HIV epidemic in Boston in the 50s or 60s? Yeah. So, yeah, so basically, the few people will have the biggest impact on yeah. an epidemic. Yeah, so people virus. that are out of the ordinary, like these three gentlemen that they mentioned, the boss man, I forget his name, I didn't write it down, slept with uh, supposedly 100 women and gave HIV to a bunch of them. Is that the guitarist from uh, Kiss? Boss man? <laughs> Why? Um, Lou Sean. Okay, so, <laughs> so there's Lou Sean Williams. Yeah. He also went by the names of Face, Sly, and Shaitik. Yeah, but they don't talk about Lou Sean all that much. They mostly talk about boss man, the pimp. I think yeah oh yeah that's right so he was the boss man clone are you talking about darnell mcgee that's that's the mcgee i was looking for yeah that's the mcgee so and also gaytan duga who claims he slept with 2500 women and he His they they zero. they uh, went back and discovered that he was the cause of uh the 41st hiv cases in california and New York. Holy crap. He was a flight attendant. This guy was traveling all the time, and sleeping with French a bunch Canadian. of... Yeah. So you know, he was, du gars. He was du gars. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder... <laughs> I, I, I googled him, but I... Uh, there's... What he he's a like? good-looking guy. Ah, oh, baby. Oui. Motherfucker. He even has the two dots on the E's. Look at that mustache. Show off. Where is he from? Is he from Montreal? Quebec, Quebec City. City. Uh, that explains uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Jacques Jean. <laughs> What I do tell you want? What I say? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> like a blonde wow. hair. Look at that stash. Yeah. That was him. He's a good-looking dude. Just sliding it on. Damn! Look at him on that swing, just swinging on. <laughs> just swinging, swinging on. That Dirk. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Take so the law of the few. So the few that are influential, that are out of the ordinary. You guys know anyone that's like that? People that are just extremist in what they do. Yeah, I th- I know a few connectors. I think we were talking about Brock Frost earlier. I think Brock Frost is the law of the few. Like if if you give him something and he runs with it, people will follow. Like HIV, you give him HIV, <laughs> people will get <laughs> HIV. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, he is special. He's sure. a connector. He is a connector. He knows a lot. He's of also a salesman. I don't know where to put him in this. uh, Well, he's but but think about his, you know, his past. Yeah. Um, You know, he was a politician. He did a bunch of things. Yeah, he did a bunch. Like they talked about this lady that was in so many different industries. I forgot her name. I'm not sure. That that was in like chapter two. She was in so many different industries, and then she created this like park uh, to save the parks. Yeah. And then she the railways. Yeah. And then she basically essentially moved her way up. In these different types of organizations, so she touched so many different people. And she wasn't she, afraid so she to move was down either. She did the flea market thing. That's right. I feel yes. like that was a downgrade. She yeah. was a definite connector. Yeah. She you was know who connector. else is? This guy is. He did a bunch of things. Paul Revere. You're you're the Paul Revere of 2019. Sure. There's even I, a flea market. I can identify with that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's yeah. even a flea market in your lifetime. There is. Yeah. There's a chip stand. But it's, a it's you know like it's it's um anyone like probably anybody in the real estate market or any or whatever the case you probably know most of them right like if i was to say i want you to connect me with so and so from so and so yeah i'm sure you would have probably crossed paths with them at some point in your life yeah and now that you're in the, with the toastmasters you're meeting more people yes like the other day i had to connect a very weird company i had to connect somebody from a bank with someone that works uh, that is the president of a football club right so I was able to make that connection because somebody from the bank was trying to do this like football themed picnic 
hmm. and they need football equipment. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I know somebody. I Bobby Boucher. Them, connecting them together. It's six degrees Wait, of like, Kevin Bacon. Like yeah. football <laughs> or football? Like like taco football. Okay. Yeah. Like American mm-hmm. football. Mm-hmm. Right. So, what do you guys think you are in all this? Like, are you a connector? Are you what's the, the other word? A maven. A maven or a salesman. I think as a real estate agent, you need to be a little bit of everything. As a maven, you you need to know you know everything about the market or as much as possible. Mm-hmm. But not only the market, like construction. You need to know about financing a little bit. You need to know. I don't think I'm a maven. No? No. I don't I don't know much about the technical stuff. No, but you're more Very of a little. maven than someone in, who wasn't in the industry. So take that kid that came into the office a few weeks ago and wanted to have a conversation. Yeah, but that wasn't a maven. About condominiums? Yeah. This building has an issue with this and that. And yeah, but he, he wasn't trying to help you. Yeah. But he knew a lot about being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> just an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> He's in the fourth category. <laughs> no, I'm I'm sure. Like if if you get to know the guy, probably he is. But uh, I don't think it's the right. Sure. Uh, so example. What do you identify as, Chris? I think I'm a connector. Yeah. Definitely a connector. I think so. I don't think I'm a salesman. Um, you know, I can tell you this coffee tastes great, and you'll taste it. Probably tastes like shit. Most of the time, every time I I tell someone, hey, do this or do that, you'll like it. I over exaggerate it and it ends up being shitty. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> there's an art to that. Yeah, there's an art to that. And I am definitely not a maven. Hmm. Do we know a maven? A market maven. It would have to be in a specific industry. Or just like they're they're comparing a maven to yeah. uh, someone that knows like shopping and that blade guy that we we met. Blade? So this guy is fascinated with hockey. Oh yeah. Blades. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So he only talks about whatever touches the ice. I'm like, oh, do you? What do you think about Nike and Bauer? He's like, I don't, I don't give a shit about that, son. <laughs> the only thing I care about is the blade. Right. Yeah. And then a few times, like I, t- I started talking about skates, and he's like, Nah, what? What don't you understand? I don't know anything about that. I just know about the blade. Yeah. And like he was explaining about how the blades got started, like seven thousand years ago. Huh. How it was bones and like this guy knew his shit for yeah, yeah. for that. No, that was really interesting. So he was a maven. Almost as interesting as someone who knows everything about springs. You know? uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I am, but I would. I would like to be a maven. Yes. I think. I think you're. The I think you're a, a salesman. I think you're a salesman. A natural salesman. I feel like there's a stigma surrounding that. No, no, I'm a not, not a. Salesman? No, like whenever you talk about something, like. I'm very passionate. That what comes to mind is books, because yeah. you read so many books, and when you say a book is good, I'll believe you. Well, I've had a lot of people contact me for book recommendations. Yeah. Okay. Um, like even especially after the book club, like it's a lot of people contact me for book recommendations, um, and I feel like I've never failed anybody with book recommendations yet. Hmm. So, I think uh, I think we, I know and. All, all of us, we've built a pretty good opinion on what's a good book and what's a bad book, right? And like we're picking pretty good books right mm-hmm. now. So, except for Spark. Spark. I really liked Spark. <laughs> that was recommended to me by someone else. Why it wasn't a bad book. Why didn't you guys tell me I'm growing a rat tail? I tell you every <laughs> week. You just don't listen to me anymore. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Like a you you should, look like a turtle you from the grow back. It out, man. You should bring that back with some. It looks, like, it looks like a full hawk. A yeah, naturally grown turtle tail. Yeah, how is a rat tail ever a thing? Oh, I had one. I had a mushroom cut with a yeah, rat tail. Yeah, yeah. I think we should bring it back. <laughs> so I mean, we should just fucking bring it back. So just like hush puppies. Rat tail real estate. The stickiness factor. <laughs> yeah. I just want to talk about that a little bit. Um, I wrote some notes here. Uh, so they, we talked a little bit about the HIV epidemic. Yeah. Okay. Um, and how it it grew more deadly than other strains, right? Yeah. And that's because it's, I guess, sexually transmitted, and it was transmitted by the few, mm-hmm. right? Then you have the law of the few people. That's the essentially the eighty twenty principle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How a few people generate the most business, generate the most whatever. Yeah. And then finally, we've got the power of context. And in this book, they talk about they talk about how this lady mm-hmm. uh, was essentially murdered on a busy street in the Bronx. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah she was just running. And 38 people saw her? 39? 38 witnesses. Not one of them called the cops. And she they was stabbed multiple times and trying to run away. She could have She was assaulted saved. three separate times. Yeah. More than more than one, yeah. more than once. It's, um, <laughs> it's a lot. So thirty eight people witnessed it. Not one of them called because they assumed the other person was going to call. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing. Like you know, if, you, if you're walking in the mall and you see somebody fall with a heart attack, you're assuming somebody else called the cops, or you're assuming um, that you're assuming somebody else is going to take action, yeah. but they don't. Yeah. And that person can possibly die because of that. So what would you do? Like what would you do if you I walk in the mall? You would stop. Yeah. I would stop. Too. I, I would probably. Stop. I think yeah. so. I mean, it well, has to be a pretty remarkable coincidence that everybody in that area are people that wouldn't stop. Yeah. But that does happen. Those right? neighborhoods have a certain element. But he's also yeah. talking about them looking at that happening through their windows. I think it's not like they were on the side of the street and they saw it happen. Yeah. yeah. No, they were. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. power of context. If you were right there, what would you do? Like jump the guy or something i saw or help him one of my friends how fucked up you are w- once saw like a a shooting well, he didn't see it but he knew a shooting had happened and he was in his bedroom and he saw a guy escape from the, the crime scene <laughs> and he never reported it oh my god man <laughs> <laughs> because you? he didn't want to get in trouble. We don't know that that's what happened. Well, you, you saw the guy it. jump a fence. I saw the <laughs> guy. So we're living there. in. <laughs> we were living in Vanier then, and uh, it was like housing projects in front of of the house. I love Vanier. Yeah. And uh, there must have been like six, seven cop cars. A we read fire about truck. We, we read about like the fully um, extended with people watching over the area. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to find. I guess. I guess they're trying to find a weapon. I don't know. Like, why would you have like, you know, ladders and looking on the roofs and stuff? And while the cops are like surrounding the area, we see this place that we know that they're like fucking drunk people. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. This guy just jumps the fence and starts running, and I'm like. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> just Call Marty. It. Yo, I just saw a guy jump the fence. I'm pretty sure he shot or whatever. Did Wait, something that, wrong. that person died? No. Uh, no, no. Shot in the hip? Nah. Yeah. So we read about it in the news the next day. That's how I found out. But what am I going to do? Like, hey, he's running. You know? So he also, you said you made eye contact with him. Yeah, well, I was in my little tiny window. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking... Drinking, <laughs> right in drinking his a beer. Bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you can be like... It's normal to feel afraid. Like yeah. this guy, if he, if somebody can go out and kill someone, then he can. If, and he saw that you saw him, he, and then he and somebody and and then you know somebody else could have seen him too. But he saw you see him, and then he gets arrested because of a witness. He'll assume it's you. Yeah. And yeah. when he comes out of jail, he knows where you live, bro. And he knows your, where your bedroom is. <laughs> and especially in that moment, there's. It's a fight or flight response. You either you do one or the other depending on your personality yeah. type. Yeah. Well, this one time I saw this lady. She's she's known where we grew up for uh, always being in the, in this wheelchair. But sometimes she's not. Like she has her days. Uh, so I see her at a restaurant, and I'm like, oh, she's doing well. Like she's walking slowly and you know just making her wobbling her way towards mm-hmm. the restaurant. She trips. Not even kidding on the a ledge. A gap was like I've an inch high. Times, yeah. She smashed her face on the ground, and I was just stunned. I was just looking at her, <laughs> and then other people rushed in, but I I froze. Sometimes yeah. you freeze, yeah. I was like, uh, fr- uh, okay, yeah, poor lady, but I wasn't alone. Other people stepped in. There was this one time we were uh, playing. I was coaching football, and one of the players dislocated his finger. Ouch! All right. So being part of this football club, we weren't rich. We didn't have a really a, a trainer. So when I got there, uh, was it called, you know, he's, he's crying. I'm like, listen, just close your eyes. And I just pulled it like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, put, and put his finger back together. Oh, my God. So then he, he starts moving his finger and he's like, it worked. I'm like, okay. I'm like, so I why? did something like that. I'm too. Like, so let's just wrap up your finger and then get you back on the field. Yeah, of course. We need you out there. <laughs> um, anyway, so so the next day, obviously, it started. S- <laughs> <laughs> the next day, sweater swelling up, but everybody talked about it. Everybody talked about Coach Ramy making the move here. 
<laughs> right? So you can oh, be the hero no. of your own. If every, you can be the hero of your story. All you have to do is just, you know, if, if that's just an added motivation to help out and act, there's benefits to it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. In high school, I had a crush on this girl, and uh, she walked into class one day. Her arm was hurting, and she couldn't move it. So I said, I'll step up. I'll be the hero. So I went up, <laughs> yanked her arm back into place. Clock! <laughs> I never got the girl, but I had the moment though. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, well, it so worked. Nice. She upset? No, oh, it worked. Well, well, that's, that was the end of the listen, story. Listen, if, if she doesn't want to like give you the proper thanks you deserve, hey she's man, not right. Come see Doctor Love. <laughs> Doctor Love, Doctor, right here. Doctor Bidu. <laughs> Doctor so Love. let's uh, let's move on to oh. chapter two and talk about Paul yes. Revere's Massachusetts ride. So if you yes. haven't heard of Paul Revere. Um, I guess he was like an influencer, a connector in Massachusetts at the time. And he had heard uh, from word of mouth that the British were planning an attack. Hell will pay tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He heard that. Right? Was that right. the line? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the line was. Yeah, there will be hell to pay. I didn't there will be hell yeah, to yeah, pay. Yeah. So, he, so he warned the American colonists that the British were planning an attack. Um, is a famous word of mouth epidemic, right? And then, uh, you know, his fellow colonist, William Dawes, yeah. delivered the same message, reverted, but few people listened. Yeah. People listened to Paul Revere, but didn't listen to, um, what's his name? William Dawes. Yeah. Okay, so, and this really separates, like, the influence that Paul Revere had versus William Dawes. Yeah. Yeah, so Paul Revere was in a different game yeah. altogether like he was a part of different groups um he was well known in the community not just in boston but in other cities so for him when he started spreading the message people listened to him you know you know who's a connector who who may, could be a paul revere it's th that movie i watched the, the is it the black godfather i haven't seen it on netflix no it's good it's called the Black Godfather, and he's essentially like this guy. Nobody knew. Everybody knew who he was, but nobody knew what he does. And like he um, has met and influenced people like Barack Obama, uh, like a lot of Hollywood stars, uh, a lot of rappers, a lot of celebrities. Uh, I forget his name, man. I forget his name. Google the Black Godfather. He's right there. Like he, you know, you, uh, um. Uh, <laughs> 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 what's, his, what's that dude called? Um, Denzel? Is, no, 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 no. Denzel was part of, but he, he. Uh, Shaft? No, no, no. <laughs> Googler. <laughs> Googler. <laughs> Googler. Googler. That famous singer, Bill Gather, Bill uh, Gathers. Don't know him. Yeah, you do it. Ain't no hey. sunshine on me. Oh, yeah. Gone. Lean DMX. on me. <laughs> Lean on me. Ain't no sunshine. It's quite a bomb. <laughs> Bill. Sorry, Bill Withers. Bill Withers? Yeah, he discovered Bill Withers. Huh. Okay, yeah, I know that song. He sang that song. That was in that movie with DMX. He sang that song. Oh, yeah. Lean on me. Hmm. Clarence Avant. That's him. He sang. So no say Clarence Avant. That's him. It's rated a 7.7 .7 on IMDb. Usually a good sign. I'm going to check it out. Black it's, Godfather. It's a good, it's a good movie. And honestly, it describes the things that Malcolm is talking about in this book bri brilliantly because this guy was a connector. Oh, so so it's not a movie. Bill, it's, a, it's a documentary. Bill Clinton. There's no pictures of Bill Clinton. P. Diddy. Yeah. Babyface. Yeah, Bill Clinton talks, Lena Richie, all of these guys. And you know what? Um, he mentioned Jesus. something in Jerry that movie. He mentioned something uh, in that movie, and he said everything and everything, everything starts and ends with money, even your marriage, which is a discussion that my wife and I had afterwards. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> he, you know, he has a lot of nice, funny quotes. And he's just straight business. Like uh, anytime he he comes into a room, he's just connecting somebody with somebody else. He's so he's, he's like a, like else. a talent manager kind of thing. Man, he's just everything. Yeah. So like he, 
I would recommend that book. I yeah. would recommend that movie, especially while you're reading this book. So whoever yeah. is listening out there, The Black Card for Godfather, Clarence Avant. I looked if he's written a book. He hasn't. To but our many listeners. What's the name of the guy in the book here uh, where he, um, every time he goes somewhere, he'll find someone in common with you no matter what? Oh, um he has 1,600 people in his role. Yeah. Scott Moore. <laughs> it's a Jewish guy. I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't help but, but think of... Uh, Weisberg? Uh, Scott Moore. No, no, he's in, <laughs> he's in chapter two. He's in chapter two. Yeah, yeah, he's... Um, I just want to keep that page. I don't want to talk about this. This, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know uh, a lot of these names. What did you score? Three, you know five. A, you know a Rankin? Yeah, Sean Rankin. You know a Weber? Yeah, the hockey player. I know Darren Rose. Yeah, Rose. Um, I just did a deal with a Rose. Oh no, it's. Oh, I scored a ten. But ten names. Ten names. That but um, man. listen, but a lot of these. But I was thinking of tough. like even okay. even people I don't necessarily know, but I've heard the name if or I've seen the name. I know the person. If you take this list and you replace it with Tremblay, Beauchamp, yeah, 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 La Forêt, yeah, yeah. No. we'll we'll score quite high. You will, yeah. But if we if replace it with a bunch of Lebanese names, Haddad, why? So Mahmoud. Julia Haddad, who's that? <laughs> Julia Haddad. So why do I know that name? I don't know. Um, I, I know, know Haddad. So score at least a one. Essentially, connectors. Just to give you an idea of what connectors, I actually wrote down here the difference between connectors and all that stuff. Give me a sec. Connectors are people with large, diverse circle social circles who bring others together, right? Yeah. Uh, the make and remember friends and acquaintances. Um, mavens are information specialists, and then salesmen are persuaders. Yeah. Well, that sums up our conversation, so I guess we're done. <laughs> I'm a persuader, huh? You did persuade Chris right there. Yeah. He was, that's, uh, that's right. <laughs> he was persuaded of your... Oh, of your so Some good I persuasion. Got a, I got a question for you gentlemen. What Jesus. <laughs> what will be the tipping point for this podcast? Um so when Brock Frost starts listening and spreads the word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how do we get um connectors to listen in on this? this so content? I think what we could do and what I, we should do is probably um have a website. Okay? And on the website, each one of us will have to summarize parts of the book yeah and post them up there right something for people to go on and then once people can go on check out what we're talking about check out the things that we talk about maybe it will entice us to um entice them sorry to come on the podcast and ask questions and recommend books and stuff like that like i feel like if we can build this community and it takes a long time to build a community but if we build a, a community in ottawa to talk about influential books business books it would be huge yeah I um I sort of had a little brain fart this morning and uh, I thought hey like this uh, book club is one of my favorite things uh, right now like yeah. one of my favorite po projects to work on and like we're always talking about different things from different books but if we could tie in every week maybe a small segment to say how can we use what we read this week to grow our audience for right. the book club you know that would be an interesting uh, subject, and I think our listeners would really latch on to that segment, right. and they would be like, "Oh, how can I use this book to improve my business as a barber, or you know, as an accountant, or like the boys are like talking about this book and how yeah. they can use the principles to grow their audience members." So let's all come up with one person who is part of the law of the few. Yeah. Ask them what book they recommend so that they know that they recommended the book so they can tune in and see what we have to say. Sure. I'm sure Mr. Frost would have something interesting to recommend. Frost, yeah, for sure. So I any so. friend that we have or a family member that, that uh, could uh, You know what, though? Like, I have a friend that um, he's probably the more... He's a, he's a social genius. This guy, you put him in any room and he can just take over the room. He is a connector, but he doesn't read any books. He doesn't care about books. He's just he just has that social gift to m meet and talk to people, right? Does he listen to audiobooks? He doesn't listen to audiobooks. Either. Okay. Okay. So it's like, um, 
I would like to bring him on, but I just don't know how much value this guy will bring. Like, he's like a Brock Frost, except he doesn't have um, Brock Frost's, uh, like, depth of intelligence. Knowledge. Yeah, depth of knowledge, intelligence. Um, like, in, you know, he's not as intellectual. Level, he's not specialized in no, no, anything not. other than being social. That's okay. Maybe but, just but that's a skill in and of itself. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. This is a podcast. Does he listen to podcasts? Sometimes. Yeah. I'm listening to our podcast. Yeah. Hey, do you like this? <laughs> Want to talk about it? Tell your friends about it? <laughs> well, I told him, well, well, <laughs> let, let me give you the reaction he gave me when I told him about this book club. He said, well, what do you guys talk about? I said, we talk about books. He's like, why don't you guys talk about sex? Yeah. Hmm. I was like, well, sometimes we do. But <laughs> the main, the main, the main project here is talk about influential books because people like that. There's a market out there. Of course. We need to. Um, and we're reading anyways. Exactly. We're all well, reading anyways. I think I'm I'm becoming somewhat of a, a maven for books now. I've recommended the books we've been reading to so many people, and I've gotten some people to read the books that we've been reading. So I got um, Shoe Dog in my bag right now. My girlfriend absolutely wants to read it. Uh, Marty gave away two of my books to a friend, so I'll, I'll probably never see those books again. Um, <laughs> when uh, my trainer has when absolutely loves it. So my girlfriend's at the spa all day. She brought the purple cow. Yeah. You know what? Like I think if we could, w the value that we're adding here is we're we're using life, life examples, from the books that we're reading. I bought a copy of uh, when for Rahel. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last book? That was three books ago. What was the last book? Oh, no, The e Effective Executive. Uh, I bought a copy of The Effective Executive. Did you like it? No, we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> was it good? It was great. Yeah? <laughs> she liked it. How many slices of bacon would you give it? Uh, well, one undercooked slice of bacon. Oh, oh. okay. Oh. Undercooked. Very, very pink slice of bacon. <laughs> I lost my uh I still have bacon. my bacon. Okay. All right. Are we wrapping this up? I think we are for this week. Yeah. Okay. What do we... Um, We're going up to page 188, you said? Uh, yeah, 180... So we're going to finish up to chapter 6 or we're finishing chapter 6? No, up to chapter 6. So okay. if we do that, it's three equal parts. Sounds good. Thanks for watching. You can always... Uh, reading group guide. Huh. There's questions here that we can go through. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's an interview with Malcolm Gladwell. Cool. Bye bye. Ta la prochaine. Oh. What? What's up? No, we're good. Thought we had a new follower, but no, it's just a <laughs> <laughs> <it> false alarm. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Actually, this was recommended by someone who went through a bit of a tipping point. Our friend from LGS, Le Groupe Swing, yeah, Michel Benac. Yeah, so let's we had him. We had him on our podcast, and let's he said, "You guys need to read this book." So he's he's an influencer that you know we can reach out and say, "Hey, man, we read the book, really liked it. You should tune in." And um, this guy was uh, producing music, singing Twenty in years. bars. 20 years wow and he announced his retirement last year for this retirement year. tour so, so he's, he's finishing up he's supposed to be done in September. France right now he hit a number one on the Quebec charts Amazing. On Père la tête yeah. for 14 weeks wow and now his new single is climbing is following the same steps right now mm. it's crossing his other number one hit on like the other one's coming down this one's going up it's at number seven what's his name yeah. uh michel benac lgs from I lgs okay i'm gonna i'm gonna search him up bye i'm gonna make you listen to one of his songs right now what's Sounds the good. new one uh, thirsty thirsty it's good yeah, it's yeah. Good stuff actually so i work out with him <laughs> it's funny <laughs> he looks fit yeah, he looks fit, and I don't fit in my pants.
Makes me uh, want to go on a four day bender like Rami. Yeah. It's Franco Ontarian 100% or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, from, from, from Orléans. From Vanier, actually. He lives in Orléans now. Born in Vanier. Lives near Chris now. <laughs> He's my <laughs> best friend. <laughs> So is this going to affect whether he retires or not then? Uh, I told him. thinking I, about it. But. Yeah. When he, so we're releasing the episode with Michel today uh, on nevisit.ca, our French podcast. And uh, you can see at the end of the interview, I said, you're not retiring, are you? And then he smirked. And he was like, ah, we'll see. But yeah. there's no way, man. Well, you can't. He's been waiting for this moment for 20 years, yeah. and now it's happening. Yeah. He's in France right now. He's coming back, I think, next week. Nice. In a tour there. That's uh, he that's, might retire. Who knows? That's Maybe. a very interesting yeah. might do a, example, though, that it's taken him 20 yeah. years to get to this. He point. Might. Yeah, well, he's the one that recommended this, and I think, I think he hinted at the fact that, hey, read this. It's sort of like what I'm going through. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I would gotta, you say that? I got to get going. C'est bon. C'est bon. Um, okay. Guy needs to pee again. I uh, <laughs> I do. Yeah, that's one. You're that's the pee, <laughs> the peeing mortgage agent. I'm the pee maven. <laughs> <laughs> There's a name every week, eh? Well, that's the trend. <laughs> we'll ask the cleaner see if it gets dirty the around the bowl. Maven. Yeah, the, the mortgage maven. <laughs> All right, guys. I like yes. that. <laughs> uh, huh? That was fun. Salut, Let's la visite. Oh, I will not see you guys. Ciao, Thank les you. amis. Maybe we can try to connect. Uh, Gonna well, be an island, are you? Get the, get the app and comment while we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I can do that. Yeah, for sure. Actually. OBS? Is it Twitch? Is there an app Twitch. for OBS? Or yeah, Twitch. Or yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool, guys. Twitch. Yes, sir. Let me know uh, when you talk to Mike. The guy's ready to buy. He bought a house two years ago. The sellers walked away. Hey, salut. À la prochaine. Okay, sounds good. N'oubliez pas. See you later. Uh, Marty, are you still able to like cut bits and pieces of the video or? Yeah, for sure. Alright, see you guys later. Be safe. Thank you. Do you want anything from Ireland? Just come back. You can eat one piece. That's what you want. Huh? Don't get a sandwich. Anything? It's not that bad. What? The rat tail. Oh, yeah, is that what you're doing? <laughs> no, it's not. You should definitely throw it out. Though. Yeah. Bringing it back. You can braid it. Ciao, everybody. <laughs>